China has been preparing for what is up for debate, but clearly preparing, digging in, hardening, taking measured preparations, and we'd better pay attention to that because we know they've been predicted by our own government, by our own military, and by China themselves as a future enemy. The United Nations agricultural experts Experts have reported confusion after showing that China has imported 2.6 million tons of rice in 2012, even though there's no apparent shortage of rice. Uh, and further, why would they be stockpiling not only rice, but all kinds of different food stocks, baby formulas, uh, I'm sure military preparations as well. Uh, we'd better pay attention and not listen to them telling us to be American jellyfish and just lay down, telling us to turn in our guns. No, we'd better maintain our independence as best we we can. We don't want to pick a fight with China, with our own government, but we'd better stand our ground and not let them just basically set us up to be destroyed in whatever the next world war is. Will it be zombies? Uh, probably not literally. That's obviously just conditioning that's been used by the CDC, our own government, and the Hollywood propaganda system. But we need to be prepared for the fact that they're looking for conflict worldwide with foreign enemies, with the people, and it's just disgusting. Meanwhile, they've been continuing to seize upon any and all tragedies they can to hammer home, to beat you over the head, to brainwash you on television that you must somehow how turn in your guns. New Hampton police may now use statements in a high school threat investigation uh, that came just days after the shooting in Newtown, Connecticut. It was a threatening note from a student. One of the high school students had left in the bathroom five days after the gunman killed 20 students. He was asked to write a statement in reference to the threat, acknowledging that they take matters seriously and share the concern of police and school administrators. Uh, of course, there was the shooting in Bakersfield, and whatever else happens, whether by coincidence or someone's ill design, they will clearly seize upon, they will wait and wait and wait to seize upon any and all events that supposedly build their case until somehow we're told to accept this gun control. I say no to it. We're not going to be brainwashed. We know what the overall statistics are on guns. Even the Clinton Justice Department admitted that 1.5 million crimes are prevented per year by gun owners. Gun owners of America and NRA estimate it much higher at 2.5 million crimes deterred and 2 million crimes deterred, respectively. Uh, just also want to mention the DVD we sell, Nullification, the Rightful Remedy. The counter to all this gun control measures is something Thing we've seen popping up recently. Sure, it's small beginnings right now, but we've seen the police chief in the small town in Pennsylvania say he's going to introduce the Second Amendment preservation ordinance to say, no, we won't enforce any gun control in our town. We've seen the state of Wyoming introduce legislation. Other states are beginning to introduce that legislation as well. And we need to encourage lawmakers and officials at the city level, the local level, the county level, the state level to say no to the feds, to remind them that the Second Amendment is a a guaranteed constitutional right. It's above the Constitution and Bill of Rights. It's a God-given right, but it's especially guaranteed that it shall not be infringed. And if we say no at enough levels of our government, we can get them to back off, and we have that right under the Second Amendment. This is my little book. What's your little book? I hope it's not Chairman Mao's book of red quotations. The flurry of drone strikes sets the stage for U.S. escalation in Pakistan in 2013. Jason Ditz at Antiwar.com highlights how, even though it was a very brief decline in drone strikes in 2012, we're off to a bang in 2013 with at least 40 known drone victims in the first 10 days of 2013 here in January. And of those 40 drone victims, uh, who they call suspects, only one of those 40 have been named Malvi Nazir. Everyone else is just collateral damage, bystanders killed, and we know about all the terrible cases where wedding parties are mowed down with drones, where people who come to aid those who've already been attacked by drones are then subsequently attacked by drones. And of course, we have pointed out the powerful but disturbing hypocrisy of how Obama and the others will shed tears over the children here at home, but could care less about the children, the killing by drone strikes, and the continued war on terrorism.
terrorism. Turning now to our quote of the day, it comes from Bill Clinton. Uh, he, of course, introduced the assault weapons ban, made it law for 10 years. They uh, unfortunately had to put in the sunset provisions, unfortunate that is, for the gun grabbers, but that's why they're back around to try to get not only a, the assault weapons ban, but much more introduced. But here's Bill Clinton's very alarming statement from 1994 when he was on MTV to brainwash the youth culture that enough is enough. When we, <clears throat> when we got organized as a country and we wrote a fairly radical constitution with a radical Bill of Rights, giving a radical amount of individual freedom to Americans, uh, a lot of people say there's too much personal freedom. He goes on to say, when personal freedom's being abused, you have to move to limit it. That's what we did in the announcement I made last weekend on the public housing projects about how we're going to have weapon sweeps and more things like that to try to make people safer in their communities. These globalists who've been put into power, both parties have a disdain for the Constitution. Again, George W. Bush called it a GD piece of paper. Uh, you've seen how Obama and Clinton view our Bill of Rights and Constitution, our right to keep and bear arms. They think our rights to freedom as Americans under the Constitution is, quote, radical and that we need a, quote, change. Uh, I say we need to give them a fight in the info war. Thanks for watching. We'll be back after this. In 1953, the CIA and British intelligence staged terror attacks to overthrow the democratically elected leader of Iran, Mohammad Mossadegh. Mossadegh had nationalized Iran's oil fields and denied British Petroleum a monopoly. U.S. and British intelligence operatives launched a successful coup d'etat and overthrew the Iranian government, replacing the regime with a ruthless dictatorship while seizing control of Iran's oil supply. 1964. U.S. warships were apparently attacked by North Vietnamese PT boats, an incident that kicked off the U.S. involvement in the Vietnam War. The attack was a staged event that never actually took place. What followed was an excuse by President Lyndon Johnson to dramatically expand the scale of the Vietnam War. Ultimately, at the cost of three or four million dead Vietnamese and 58,000 Americans. June 8, 1967. The USS Liberty, an American naval vessel sailing off the coast of Gaza, was suddenly and deliberately attacked by naval and air forces of Israel. The well-coordinated attack, which lasted for hours, resulted in the deaths of 34 crewmen, 170 injured, and catastrophic damage to the ship, one of the most highly decorated vessels in U.S. history. Egypt was to be blamed for the attack, to serve as a pretext to drag the U.S. and her allies into war in the Middle East. If not for the heroic efforts of the ship's captain and his brave crew, the Liberty would have faced almost certain destruction. The truth about Israel's attack and subsequent White House cover-up continues to be officially concealed from the American people to this day.